welcome everyone uh today i'm really really excited for uh this particular series that we have launched and there is the web development boot camp this is a month long event that we have planned for all of you from the discord community who want to really understand uh the basics of web development and start from the very basics to go all the way to creating full stack applications and uh, today uh i have uh, myself i'm shivai a developer advocate at uh, scalar and also have been involved with a lot of different open source uh, uh open source organizations and open source uh, uh conferences and projects as well uh, from you know google summer of code lfx mentorship and with me i have raghav uh, and raghav is currently a developer software developer intern at blue stacks and i mean i'll just uh, have raghav to also share the rest of his uh, journey with tech so raghav over to you Thank you so much, Shivai, for introducing me. So, hi, my name is Raghav Dhimira. So, I am an SC intern at Blue Six, and also have been involved in many open source organization, and also collaborated with Scalar with this web development session. So, we would be starting our with a module one, web development bootcamp, and hence we are the speakers, Raghav Dhimira, myself, and my colleague Shivai. So, initially starting with the introduction of what is Git and GitHub. as you know like uh, we we are obviously intended towards the web development session but before hand we have to understand how we are going to showcase our development uh, projects to all all of the world users like world wide users so basically we have some tools before hand to get started with web development so that we can store our code as well as represent our code to the user world wide so the initial tool that we would be using it git and github so hence for we would be having some introduction session to git as well as a uh, uh, website name github so in this module so in th this will be divided into two phases so initially we would be having a, a representation of git and github and the second would be uh, the web development session and along with the introduction of all the tools that you would be covering along with that along with the development yeah so uh, in this phase one so we would be having an intro to git so explaining about git how it work and how are some of some of the common terms along with some commands and then we would be covering github along with some commands and definitely we will be having an hands on session on git uh, beforehand so that would be a quick short summary of how the git and github would work so basically defining about the git so git is basically an open source uh, code base for basically for storing all the code and hence uh, as we uh, code in our environment so basically we store the particular instance in our base rep, uh, base folder so git is basically for controlling our version if we have made some changes in our development code so basically we create a version if you if you have seen if you have downloaded any play store application def definitely most of you have some android phone as well as the ios phone so we have the apps uh, play store as well as app store within our mobile so if you install any application you would definitely have seen some version so basically you download an application and after some time an update would come so that that's a new version of that application so basically git is something that is used to control those version like if we have made some changes we have updated the application so we just increase the version and we just uh, like place it in the market where the user download that application so basically git uh, reminds that all so git is the full package how we can control our code base as well as uh, we definitely can have some changes within the git as it the source code is totally open source upon github yeah. and uh, moving towards the version version control system basically i have explained this so uh, like creating a new version as soon as we have done an upgrade to an to our existing application so that basically a version uh, controlling a particular version and the whole scenario when we have a central repository so basically there are some term that you have to keep keep in mind while trying out git so i would be explaining each and every term that would be definitely using within the git and while using that 
so the initial term is a repository so basically you can compare the repository as a folder in which all the code base would be available and stored so from that code or uh, from that folder so every developer would be fetching the uh, project as well as they would be contributing to to the project and made make the intended changes and again like deploying all the code deploying means just uh, sending all the data or the updated data that we have done to the initial repository in which we have taken downloaded the code so basically our version control system basically manage these type of stuff so it tracks each and every version in which we have made the changes it basically uh, it is a overall environment in which it help our team to basically track as well as manage their code changes if of, uh, like giving a, giving an example of an application if i have made a change to an application i have updated a small button and again we have pushed to the main app store in which user are downloaded but again uh, user are not responded uh, so well to that button so we want to basically revert all the code base to the previous version so basically that again helps in tracking all the version along with we can backtrack that we can revert all the code changes or we can just uh, update the current code base with the new one so that uh, totally covers under the version con version control system so again proceeding with this some common term as i've told the repository is again a small uh, uh, again a storage location in which your code is handled so a repository can be compared to a folder in which uh, your code base is there so basically whenever we want to have a uh, uh, make changes to a particular code base or a project so basically we clone the whole project from the repository cloning mean just copying the code from another system to our computer system basically in order to create a copy of that particular code base and like uh, updating that current code base uh, within our particular system in which we are you uh, we have cloned so again we have a term such as staging so basically we have a particular step that we have to follow where while using git so basically uh, we have uh, three common commands we have git add git commit and git push so basically when we uh, use command git add so whichever uh, we have done the changes so that uh, get what get does is like it combines all the changes at once that we have done and mark it as a checkpoint like we i have updated a button so it marks a checkpoint that i have updated a button and again it stored in a particular instance within a git so whenever you installed git into a computer so that and initialized a folder so that make a dot git folder that is hidden in every system so i will be representing that so where you can find that git folder and everything and again so when i uh, cre uh, initialize the command git add so that creates a checkpoint and again i have to commit the code committing means like uh, taking that particular checkpoint and storing it within a particular folder so that uh, if we want to that that would be main version that we would be controlling if we want to please uh, if we want to revert our code back so we can definitely do with the commit commit uh, whenever we commit a code base uh, so that create a particular id so we can backtrack that id and we can definitely revert our code base to any time or instance that we want that's intended so again we will we would be explaining each and every time and we would be having a proper demonstration how these all work and how git actually look while we are creating commits and again for the season so again uh, there are simple commands like push and pull push mean like deploying or like sending our code to the main server like i have done some changes so i would be transferring all the data from my machine to the main repository uh, main repository main uh, some storage location uh, in the cloud 
so we definitely our computer cannot be accessible by other user so our storage area should be there in from which uh, other can also share the common code base that they have so we basically intend to commit our changes we update the code and we basically send all the data to that uh, storage online storage so basically that mean push and again pull mean retrieving all the data from that online storage to our local computer so that if anyone had pushed some changes or updated the code and then send the data to the online uh, repository so we can retrieve by using the pull command so that's some of the common term that we generally uses while explaining or while updating or using with the git and again these are the common command again you can post the video and we, you can see these all command at most of the time we would be only using a bunch of command like git init for initializing and git add and git add git commit and git push these are the common command that we would be using and these are the other command for some specific operation that we need while uh, controlling our versions to the project and again to visualize every scenario that we are discussing right now so you can definitely head toward this link that is again visible on the screen so i would be explaining a demo so yeah let me refresh it so i would be yeah so as soon as you uh, make a command git in it so basically i would be entering git in it so this will initialize the folder so initially you would be head, heading upon toward git download so again you would be downloading so prior to using it so you have to download the git within the local system so there are linux windows and mac os and uh, which git is present so basically you can download it any of the operating system that you have so by installing this uh, this git so you you are able to use git command so like explaining just a second yeah so as soon as you install git within your local system so you can check whether git is installed pre installed in your system so by entering git hyphen hyphen version so you would be getting a git version of the version that you have already been installed in the pc so that would be displayed upon the terminal or the or the command prompt that you have so that describe a git is already installed in your pc so heading back towards the visualization of git so how git work so initially if you have made a code base or something so basically starting with as we are discussing about web development so you must have read about html so that's the most common language that we use while defining our web page or, or structuring the web page so again i would be creating that and then we have to use git init command to initialize that particular folder in which index.html or any abc.html is present in order to uh, make a git folder and again to play around with it and again when we uh, like insert this command and press enter so a local folder would be created with the name of dot git and that would be hidden hidden from the user so we we can see that with the various command performance and again we are using just a uh, online visualization tool so it do provide some uh, like a limited number of commands within this particular system so we would be entering as soon as we initialize a git so how git would be representing so if you are saying this master along with this head and along with this first commit so this first commit basically describe a message that we have inserted during uh, committing a particular code 
so this is the initial code base which we have committed it has a particular id assigned to it if we want to drag back to this particular id so i just have to like copy this id and paste it within the particular terminal and uh, insert that command the intended command that again track me back to this code base initial code base so if i and the master describe the branch in which i am working so git is basically a branched system if uh, if a online repository is there and i want to take a take the code, whole code base so i would be taking a pull correct so again i would be taking uh, i would be doing the intended or changes or i would be update, updating the code base with some particular component that i would be creating and at the same time another person would be creating or updating some stuff to the same code base so what we do is we basically have a branch type of system so i will create a, a branch to it and that person will be creating another branch so we will be having a two branch with a common node so this green circle would represent a node and again this have the whole code base and again master represent the main branch that we are working on and had represent at what branch and at what commit we are so this will be uh, what i meant is so that would be described within a few minutes and again so whenever i commit something so git commit mean i would be creating all the a, a local commit to my code base and i would be giving a message so hyphen m main message so i would be writing initial changes so as soon as i press enter so a new green symbol would be created denoting heading towards the initial code base that means i have a particular code base changes so recalling the instance that i have provided like i would be updating a button so in this instance i have updated a button and i have made a commit changes so so the head moves towards the new commit and the master branch follows this previous commit and again now we have some other commands commands to like a uh, checkout and uh, else so again we pre prior to that so i would be making a new changes change to again pressing enter so a new change would be uh, so for example i have changed the color of the button so i would be again committing that code and that would be pointing towards that button that i have created and that would be pointing towards the initial code base that we have so we have an initial code base i have updated a button i have updated the color of the button so these are the commits that are uh, coming from the initial code base and the changes that i have done but if i don't like the button so what i will do is i will copy this id so basically it is dot dot so i will copy this id and i will just press get checkout along with this id so it's not the full id maybe yeah so it's the head move toward the previous commit and if i tends to make make some changes to this commit so i would be adding change button color so a uh, intermediate uh, commit have been created to this and that point towards this but the master branch remain to this point as we have already committed this change either we have to revert this change in order to uh, point this directly to the main code base or either we have to again create a new branch and again we have that particular instance but this scenario explain how git works so you don't have to remember all this stuff that i am recalling so again so i would be just explaining how the git structure would be looking like so i would be creating a new branch if another developer is working on that so new branch so again a new branch has been created so by pressing the command get branch so we i can see all the branch that have already been created so one is the master 
that have the initial code base and this is the new branch that I have created. So again, making a changes to this. Let commit change it and again change it to. Now we have a list of all the commits that we have pointing toward each other. If you can, if you recall, if you have studied about data structure, so it's about it's a structure of a linked list. So pointing toward each other. And again, when we recall, uh, when I again change my branch from new branch to the master branch. So I just write git check master. So again, my head head basically uh, represent where actually where actually we are working. So basically uh, now we are working at this commit at the master branch. So again, I would be creating a new commit. So changes make three and again changes make four. So if you can see over there, so this make a branch type of system. All the linked lists pointing toward each other. So again, all commits pointing toward each other. At last, we have this change to in which we have we have the intended change. So this is the scenario that I was discussing before. Like uh, I am working in this master branch, and some other developer is working with this new branch. So the core base is similar till this point of time. And after this, the code base is different. I am making changes to any other instance, and that developer is. Uh, making changes to other instances. So basically how Git work is. So I would be taking a full new branch. And by the okay. way, uh, we have a few people who said that they're finding the Git to be a bit boring. But this to again, key, uh, you know, just understand why we are putting up this up is that uh, we want to just showcase how can you also contribute to the open source project that we'll be creating alongside these web development boot camps. So we just wanted to keep a small, quick session on how you know this sort of Git and GitHub sort of works. But of course, soon we'll just move on to the basis of web development as well. Yeah, definitely that that would be only for like contributing to the open source that we have planned like you would be contributing to a particular repository so that's a initial demonstration so how you would be contributing to that and again uh getting back to this so we have the branch type of system so again i believe like this is the common Visualize visualization that we want to give to you how get basically a uh, work within that particular folder that I've explained. So again, getting back towards the Git presentation. So yeah, so explaining about what is GitHub is like the online storage point or the storage location that I'm talking about is again the GitHub. So GitHub is the main hosting platform there are many other services services too like gitlab and other two and you can also make your own online platform or online storages but github is the most common and public platform that is available for everyone and free of cost you can definitely host and again deploy your code there and you can store all the code base that you have there with the use of git tool so again uh GitHub is an online repository with which again lets other people to other developer and contributor to to contribute to the code base that we have within that repository. And again, now here the main point comes. So we have uh, all finished the introduction session to Git and GitHub. And before starting toward the web development session, so again I would be having a small introduction about GitHub. So we, so as soon as you would be uh, like move toward github.com, so this screen would be visible. So either you have to sign up if you are not a user or either sign in if you are already a user. So by signing, so this is the main page that you would be looking like. So, and again, you can, uh, the online storage that I was talking about is like that term is called repository. So when you click on this plus icon and again, just click on this new repository. 
so it basically creates an online storage point within the GitHub, and like I could be giving a name as Scalar Web Development, and again I would be describing it would be public if I want to kept it private and only meant for me. So I would be taking on this private icon. Else, if it's this repository or this online storage is available for everyone, anyone can just carry on to this uh, or copy this code base. So just I would be kept keeping it as public. So these are the basic checkpoint that I, if I don't want to like add a readme file, the readme file describe what is in this repository. And again, these are other terms and neglecting all this. So I would be creating the repository. So it has some basic command in which uh, we can follow this command in order to like initialize our git repository and again but for now i would be representing this particular url that's been given here so that represent the main git origin or this is the link of online storage repository in which we would be pushing all the code or sending all our local code base to this online github repository so this is the brief uh, description about how Git and GitHub work and how it look like along with some visualization. So again, getting back towards the web development session. So again, yeah, hands over to Shivai uh, for like having an introduction about what is web development and how it is being used in our day to day life. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, because some of the folks, uh, you know, had uh, some questions regarding, uh, you know, setting up of Git as well. So Raghav, at the end of this session, we'll just have a very quick demonstration of how you can, you know, set up uh, a local repository and how you can use some of the basic Git commands that we'll be doing at the end of the session. But uh, now starting off with what people have been, you know, eagerly waiting for, and that is uh, the basics of web. So uh, of course, again, yeah. keep uh, coming in uh, behind, you know, um, with your questions on the uh, you know, Learn Together channel. And uh, yeah, so without wasting any further time, let's get started. So of course, uh, why we are here uh, today, like, you know, more than uh, 300 people watching live right now um, is, exam is exactly about what exactly is web development, right? So see, I mean, first of all, today, the entire world as we know is moving towards digitalization right all uh even offline stores offline businesses had to move because of the pandemic and have an online presence so you look at any industry every industry has some kind of an online presence and that is either with the help of applications like mobile applications or web applications right so initially we started out with simple html static websites and then we actually moved on gradually to having, you know, banking related, uh, you know, e-commerce platforms. And today, like web applications have become so powerful that you can run a lot of desktop, you know, grade applications such as video editing, uh, you know, watching movies, uh, right? Video streaming. And all of that can happen on uh, web applications, right? So whether it's playing games or, you know, having some kind of library management systems, everything is having... Uh, a presence online with the help of web applications, PWA, PWAs, right? So the idea um, about this particular web development bootcamp is that how can you yourself create a web application or a website of your own and then also, you know, get it deployed. So I think we can uh, move to the next uh, slide, Raghav. All right. So over to you, Raghav. I think you're on mute. Yeah, so getting back towards uh, how web development work is, uh, like prior to that, we would be explaining how a web uh, project is being structured. So basically starting, it contains of three main elements, starting with HTML, the hypertext markup language. So that uh, basically create the fundamental unit or the building block of uh, how our text would be visualizing to within a particular website or web application. And again, the second would be the cascading style sheets, CSS. So that compresses of the designing unit. So we, if we have given a basic 
structure to to our web application so we we would definitely have to style we would be adding the color borders boundary padding margin and that again all of uh, all of them would be compressed with within the css unit and again the third one would be javascript so that again compresses of the functional unit if uh, what if i want to create a button and then have to click on it so again that clicking on the button and like scrolling down or like hovering over the, any of the text so that would be all compresses bit, or if i want to perform a specific function so that would all be compressed within the javascript so for comparison so you can uh, to our body so basically you can compare html to our skeletons so basically skeleton give a structure to it so the skin and the color that we have as that totally been defined by the css that uh, and again the javascript you can compare it to as mu muscles that we have so that basically if i pull up my hand so that again my arm muscle and again there are bunch of different muscle that perform different functional unit in our body again compared to javascript so we can create our own function and that compresses of the functional unit and these three basically comprises of the whole web structure as well as how we would be representing any web application so getting towards how we can create our projects in web and again how we can uh, show it or showcase that to a user worldwide so basically web development have a three architecture system that comprises of three layers so basically we have a client layer that um, basically compared to as a front end application so at front end we have the design uh, that the people would look like like we have scalar academy website so that have a bunch of information displayed to the user so basically the the instance that is visible to the user and the all the information that is present on it that compresses of the front end and again that comes under the client tier the second would be the logic tier and uh, the logic tiers would include all the apis uh, or like the connection from front end to back end so that basically uh, compresses of the logic tier again if i click a button so if you have fill up a form so in the name section address section number section so after submitting a form so how it is being transferred to the back end so that all all comes under the logic tier so all the information would be handled uh, through the api or the particular function within the javascript and that have would be sent towards a intended ip address or you can say uh, any api server address so that whole bunch of data would be transferred to the backend and that whole system would be comprises of all the logic tier and that include the web framework like we have uh, some bunch of apis api system and all the workflow system and again we have the last data tier in which that is basically the backend the main backend of the system that uh, uh, represent where we store the data how the data is being handled how all the uh, like how where it will be stored in which time it would be returning the data all of that comes under the data tier so basically that again comprises the sql system in which we store the data like all the databases comes under this we have the search engine like uh, and at which uh, that particular instance we have to search any query or something so again we are at the three tier system architecture so that comes on under any web development application or the scalable web development application that that and day to day life that the user interact with yeah and uh, uh, one example that i would like to give is let's say facebook right so when you log into facebook yeah. uh, whatever is you are seeing on the front right whatever you're seeing on the screen for example right now you're looking at a youtube video so you are whatever you're seeing in the front that is your client side and uh, whatever is happening on the back right for example when you log in so your information that you put in your email and your password goes to a logic based system 
where it handles okay like what is the email so it is able to just capture your email that you have inputted and then your uh, you know sort of your password that you have given and then it will check that out in the database it will query through the database so really what the front end is to display everything that you see and whatever interactions that happen are going to be happening on the front end now whenever that interactions involve any kind of uh, database uh, you know so the back end sort of interacts as that bridge between your database and your front end which showcases or updates or changes values on your front end so that's sort of the architecture that you know you can expect and this is what we will be also uh, having in our uh, bootcamp where we'll be starting with front end we'll be moving towards uh, you know back end and creation of apis and then uh, you know talking about uh, how databases work and how to connect them all together to create a full uh, full stack application yeah correct thank you bhai and again moving towards how we are basically having a full stack web development course and what's the roadmap for that so basically we have a basic we should have a basic understanding how html css and javascript work so basically creating some tags within the html styling it with using css and again we have different bunch of functions objects and array structure and type within javascript and how they are being handled so we should have basic understanding of all these three languages and again uh, we should have a knowledge of responsive web design so how it res basically responsive web design mean uh, how it would be looking within a particular desktop or within a mobile so that have a different width system so basically we have a 2k desktop 4k desktop now it's being 8k desktops so how it would be looking all the desktop would be looking or uh, the design would be looking in huge screen as well as as small as a small uh, screen fonts like now it's uh, iphone 13 mini or we have samsung galaxy s20 that is foldable so that's the smallest screen created as for now so again testing with the different bunch of uh, responsive words so we again have some tools that i would be uh, representing to you how we would be testing all the website within that again having an insight of ecmascript ecmascript is nothing but uh, the the javascript another name is ecmascript but how it is different is like we have a javascript is a combined common term but ECMAScript is a series of version of uh, JavaScript that is being updated till now. So we have a bunch of version. So basically we have the major update in 2015 about ESX that have an introduction of some common syntax and as well as criteria that we have to follow. Like use straight or arrow functions or const let keywords for the variables. And again, we have a uh, so basically we have different version of javascript represented at uh, ecmascript or we we can denote with es along with their version number so we have es5 7 8 till 10 so again describing about the different version so we have a bunch of version representing by es along with the version number and again going towards the next and the concept of request and response so that that was for the front end and now we would be handling towards uh, how we would be having the back end as well as some uh, structure of the browser that would be covering so we have the concept of request and response so basically uh, if i am i am asking you what is your name so the another person would definitely reply with my name is abc or something so uh like i have requested something to other person and they have given me a response or they have replied to me so that's basically a request response system i requesting requesting something and that person would be responded responding me to that question so again like following up to this web uh, development so we have uh like the browser would be requesting from the server and the server would be responding to that for example, if you go to any website, so for example, google.com, so the browser have requested the Google server, like I want to check out the screen that would be visible toward the google. 
on the google.com the google server replied with a html docu document so whole html code would be transferred from their google server to our browser so that code base is being downloaded from our browser and hence would be rendered or displayed over over the browser so again when i uh, like go back to google.com so again the google server replied with this, this html document so if you want to see this uh, how html would look like go to this so i would be again explaining these whole bunch of uh, tab that that's being visible here but for a scenario this scenario so we have this html document along with this head option head tag again followed with this body uh, if it's somewhat small so i can make it big so again yeah so when i click, go to google.com so i have this html tag followed with this head tag along with body and again we have some different style options style tag for css styling again for dev if i want to go back to this image so we have this google image so that would be displayed over here if i want to go to this search box so we have an input tag that represent a text input again we can type it it in it and so this is the basic structure of how the request and response system would work within uh, this browser so again we have this dom manipulation dom basically means document object model so i would be covering in this dom manipulation in the module third but before that i would be giving an idea so what dom is dom is document object model so basically describing whole browser in a bunch of uh, object object is nothing but a javascript object represented by a uh, curly braces and we have a key value pair in it so basically we have a bunch of option within the browser in which through javascript we can handle all the uh, all the structure that is available on the front end and we would be manipulating manipulating mean ch having changes within that document so again i would be displaying that in next modules uh, so then we have a bunch of frameworks and library uh, beforehand so we have for the front end we have like react angular and react is a library and angular is a framework so basically uh, describing a small brief up about what is library and what is the difference between the framework so library is nothing but a simple functions that is being used uh, if i am created a function so anyone can use that function it whatever way they want but a framework is a collection of functions that we have to apply a strict rule while using if uh, for example as if i want to declare a particular route or a url so i have to write that it in a particular intended file or option so again framework have strict rules but library does not have and again library uh, just uh, solve a single problem or a smaller bunch of problem but a framework is a collection of uh, environment or collection of function that again creates an environment and solve the whole bunch of particular operation or function that is being intended to solve so again there are frameworks or and libraries for front end like react and angular and again for the back end we have express and nest js and many more for for like web technologies so other like python as along with uh, we have flask django and many more so we can either take any of, if we have the basic knowledge about any of the language so we can definitely go towards the library or framework so why we use them is it make our the development life a lot more easier it's easy to develop as well as it reduce a lot of time and effort that we put in while developing our application so definitely by going toward a particular library or framework that saves a lot of time and energy that we use while building up the applications and yeah so this is the main uh, thing
like setting up the environment and tools. So how we can get started towards uh, like setting up uh, our web development environment again, we initially should have a browser in order to test up the things. So a browser consists of a whole environment in which we can test up our code. Again, all a browser can only understand. So this is the main concern. Like uh, if we are, we I know Python, C++ or something. So I cannot work directly with the browser. A browser can only understand HTML, CSS and JavaScript. These are the three things that a browser understand. If I want to create a, a web page along with Python, so I definitely have should have an HTML page to render. So basically Python or other backend technology just uh, organize all the web pages that we have HTML document basically and it basically create the browser request to that server. Uh, browser cannot read Python, but they can request to the Python server and then Python server can respond them back with the intended HTML document that has been requested. So that would again be explained and in other modules, but this is the current scenario. So initially we should have a browser in order to test up our functionality like Chrome or Firefox Edge or any other. And again, move, uh, so again, you can definitely download on the Chrome or now the Microsoft initially we have the Internet Explorer that is again banned. But now we have the Microsoft Edge that is again as fast as Chrome and definitely take uh, that is again a competition between Azure Chrome. So again, we have that that environment and in order to be in order to test our functionality. So what a web developer does is if I have make an HTML document so that document is being tested within different bunch of browser because uh, some of them are iOS user Safari user and again most of us are Chrome user again they would be definitely using Firefox Edge and many more other browser like Opera or something. So that's why we should have an integrated browser along with some testing browser too in order to test our code base and again um, the second foremost thing is we should have a code editor like here are some example the most efficient and the common one is vs code that is my favorite one so and again we have a bunch of uh, other editor to like sublime or atom you can definitely head upon google and say google i want to download with the vs code or write vs code download so we have two uh visual studios basically we have a visual a simple visual studio that uh, so that comprises of an id id is basically uh, that is a whole total environment comprises in which we can do our development and along with testing too so we does not have to uh, have to download that id visual studio id we just have to download that code editor so please uh, in order to download that write vs code and again heads toward the first link that we have and download it uh, towards the intended uh, operating system that you have again uh, i have an example of vs code so is my vs code visible uh no so i think uh, you'll have to reshare your screen Okay. Yeah, you can share your entire so, screen. I will add it to the stream. So you can remove your uh, stream and we can add it again. Yeah. Thanks. Shivan. By the way, uh, a few people were talking about a pace. So I think we can just move a bit quicker if uh, that's fine, Raghav. Uh, that there is a. Yes. Yeah. All right. If you can share your screen again. All right. Yeah. Now is, is it visible? Yes, yes, not visible. Oh, awesome, awesome. So this is the starting screen of, of the Visual Studio code. So again, having the getting get started uh, explorer. So we can create a new file, open any 
folder or we can clone a git repository as represented by this uh, we can clone this particular repository so that would be visible over this code base again we have a this file explorer system we can search over the whole documentation this is the git git or the source control explorer so again all the command can be directly run without entering any command just by clicking on some buttons and again uh, there are a few bunch of uh, tabs over there so you can neglect that so here is the main extension so what is the favorite thing about the vs code is like having an extension or marketplace like we have an play store or app store within our mobile phones so we have a marketplace over here for some extension that we can use along with the vs code uh, while having our application tested and again so again there are a bunch of uh, extension that i would be representing you after this so again moving back towards this so again we moving toward the developer tools so uh developer tools comprises of some like some tabs uh like heading toward google.com again so again by clicking on this three dots neglect this update <laughs> text so i'm not updating my vs uh, chrome regularly so just heads toward these three dots you can see over there and again by hovering over more tools and then click on developer tools so in windows that must that must be a control shift i shortcut key to open up this quickly this tab quickly or in windows you can just click on command shift and i for uh, like opening this uh, tab this developer tab so basically it comprises of a bunch of options that we use in our day-to-day -day life while development so the first one is the element tab so again i would be representing that click on this three dots again go to more tools and click on this developer tools so we have a bunch of tabs over there so initially we have the element tab that represents all the html document that is being represented over this screen so uh, i was talking about the responsiveness so uh, if you can see over there so the pixel is increasing like as i increase the width of this window and decrease the width of this console or the tab and again you can see over there that, that the current width is like almost thousand pixels so we can in this way we can test along with our different screen size so how the screen how our application would be looking within different screen size and with different bits so we can apply those media queries to so that our whole bunch of application would be handled and would be comprised within that particular and fit within that screen intended screen so again coming back to the element tab so that again representing a whole bunch of html that is being returned from the google servers so again that comprises of only a simple html documentation so i would be creating a normal html file in order to represent how that would be looking like so i would be creating a new folder so with a name scalar and opening that folder within the visual studio code so getting my environment set up so if you can hover if you hover over this particular if you open this file explorer hover over this name folder name click on this first icon first icon represent uh, creating a new file so i would be representing that as in giving the name as index.html so this icon basically i can just convert this to simple html documentation so we have some common terminology while uh, retrieving this so going towards the extension tab so i would be writing html snippets so i have already downloaded these snippets so just go to the extension tab and download this so what is the use of this is 
basically we are being provided with some snippets if i click on the if i just type the exclamation mark so in this intelligence intelligence is a bunch of option that is being displayed over this drop down so i would be clicking on the first option so that initially creates a whole html template for me so basically this is the boilerplate how html documentation uh, document would be looking like starting with doc type html this so every tag i would be covering within the module 2 along with the css so in this module so i would be focusing towards how we would be using the developer tools along with this so again uh just write hi so again in the body tag so i have just written hi and click on save and then going back to that intended folder and opening it with chrome so you can see over there like this is the main uh, location where my index.html is present so again i am seeing this hi written out there again by clicking on this three dots going over the more tools and developer tools so if i see the element tab so uh, the code base is there already there like starting with doc type html uh, again with the head tag again so within the body we have the high that i have written over here so again i can change this by going and updating my code hello there so saving that refreshing the whole page as the browser does not refresh itself if they are serving a constant page but if i just click on save over here and just get back to my browser and click refresh so again my uh, intended text would be visible so that text would be fetched from the current code base that i have written again that represent the body tag that includes hello there again i can make my changes if make my changes within this html uh, element tab so if i want to check out this if i delete hello and again write hi there so just focus over this hello there so when i click on enter so it is being converted to hi there but making changes to this element tab does not affect our code base so it's already hello there in our code base but i have made the local changes within my own browser so that does not affect anything and if i click on this refresh button again the code will be fetched and again it would be hello there and again uh, this is the selection tool so if i want to select a particular uh, division or the body or some tag so by from this selection tool i can hover over that element and i can click on it so as soon as i click over it so it represent what type of uh, at which due to which tag the hello there is being displayed so if i again uh, create a paragraph tag and we have a bunch of unlisted i uh unlisted list and we have this hello there again when i click on this so this is an unordered list so again when i click on the selection tool and select this so it represent this ally is causing a particular uh this hello there display so this is the basically a uh, workflow of how element tab would be looking like and again going towards the next so this console is the javascript console so if i want to uh, like type it type any command or if i want to test any command that i have written within the code base in javascript so that is being rendered within this console tab so console tab is nothing but for use for testing as well as how uh, chrome javascript engine work so basically chrome javascript engine is v8 engine in which all the javascript uh, code compiles as well as run so 
a basic command is console dot log. So console means this particular element here. And again, log means I am printing something to the console. Log means simple a logging a particular text or a file within the console. So I would be logging. So while displaying a text, so it is always already uh, like it always being represented by a double inverted commas and then hello. So dot lock. Okay, so there is issue in my console. So basically it should return. Hello. Uh, so again, that would be covered covered in next session. So neglecting this. So basically that's the V8 engine that we would be discussing around. So all the JavaScript command would be described in the module three. And again, we have this source command that represent where our source come from and at which folder, at which service, at which uh, server or the endpoint our source code is being present. So everything is visible over here. Again, clicking on the network tab. So that represent how many network requests has been uh, taken or given. If I, so basically you can compare this URL from google.com. Uh, google so as soon as I hit this URL, again, it is being uh, like my server requested a particular URL and a response have been sent. So what's the response is an index.html is sent and uh, like it take how many seconds it took to like fetch index.html and again, uh, so what's uh, what that index.html contain is just click on this two arrow and click on response. So the whole code base is being displayed over here. Like what index.html is being uh, have been given to us. So basically it give a small HTML document along with the paragraph tag, then UL tag, then li tag. Li tag we have the hello there. And again we have a bunch of more uh, tabs that is being displayed over here and so most of the tab would be co covered with in these seven modules so uh, as uh, this network tab is basically represent how the request and response system work so how we are requesting all the uh, in uh, how we are requesting from the server and what they have given to us in the response and how gs file would be downloaded and how it work how the CS, how many css files are downloaded and me, images media font and uh, other documentation that has been downloaded from the server so that basically compresses of the request response system and again we have a bunch of tabs so we would be covering that and again getting back to what's this so again going towards so we have the session of code editor extensions. So basically we have a bunch of extension over here. So initially I've described about this HTML snippet that uh, itself create a whole bunch of like the template that we want to use just by clicking on this exclamation sign and just pressing enter. So we get a boilerplate template that we would be using while defining our HTML page. And again, we, if you can see over there, like, I've just to like oh, I've just type exclamation mark and hit enter. So a boilerplate is visible. But as soon as I click on save, like control S save. So itself my tags is being aligned. Like my body tag is initially uh, like without any tab and my head is also without any tab. But as soon as I click on save, so a line was there. So line removed and again, it have some tab. So that is basically with the help of a, another extension. So known as prettier. So this is prettier, the code formatter. So basically it formats the code uh, that we are writing. 
either it would be HTML, CSS, or JS. So basically, that meant for on the web on uh, front end web technologies that we are using. So that basically format all the code base along with that, and we can uh, define our own system while formatting. So just by going on this, just click on Control comma, or in Mac OS, just click on Command comma to open up the setting tab, or you can just uh, like. Uh, you can go to okay you have to search over there so i have never never like open the setting tab from this terminal so by just by clicking on command comma or control comma so a setting tab open up just click on save so as soon as you click on save just this way uh, option would be visible format on save just tick this option check this option to enable the formatting and you can definitely have the formatter defined so but just by clicking on or uh, just by entering format so you would be displaying a default formatter just select prettier from this so these two uh, commands that you have to follow in order to uh, like set up the prettier code uh, code formatter in order to format your code on save. Okay, so next is like uh, the live server. So this is the main extension that you would be following. So just by going towards the live server, so you can download this and uh, just by uh, hovering over this. So in that this extension is only available for windows so what is this is so we, i cannot control the live server from, from my mac operating system so just by click right clicking on this so you would have the first option of open with live server so what the uh, it does is like it open on creates a local server and it open a new tab over here with some extension of 1.7.0.0.1 column 3000 or 5000 something that already dependent upon the port number that is being defined again neglecting this so again uh, this whole document would be created and being returned over here and being displayed over the browser and as soon as you just do any changes like uh, by rating high and clicking on save so it the server itself refreshes and update this documentation so you don't have to hit refresh again and again over and again in order to like uh, display your information from the code that you are being updated updating yeah so next would be a git lens so this is a bit trickier so that is being related to git how who committed that particular code base or something and again uh, neglecting this so we have again a live share so what live share do is like again going back to the extension tab we have a live share so that is being that's an official microsoft product so what live share does is so if you see over there so here is it creates another tab in this tab window and we can collaborate with other developers we can have a duo coding or something uh, like if i have an intended changes high there and another person would be creating a new diff in this same instance using uh, live share either i can share my this particular instance or i can join other session just by clicking on join and i would be entering the url so a new tab would be open and I would be collaborating with that with another developer within the VS code environment. Yeah, so uh, so that's up for today. So what are the key takeaways that you can take from the this session? So basically we have covered Git GitHub that uh, we would be that would be helping us in order to contribute to our next modules yeah now uh, you can head over to the discord in the learn together channel and ask your questions
um whether it's related to git github or it's related to some of the basic concepts of how web development actually works how servers work right um that's you can ask um so neil is asking please show us how to save the html file in the repository that is created earlier so probably um, what we can quickly do okay. raghav is yeah. so we we can have a small demo so how we can upload our code base to that particular yeah. git repository yeah so again that i was uh, telling you about how there are some command that are already available upon the uh, git repository that you have created so just by clicking on this plus icon click on new repository so you have to add a new name and you have to define that a repository would be public and or private so i have clicked on public so this repository is publicly available upon this uh, url so shiva you can either share this url to to them so again uh, we have a bunch of command over here so you can run in order to test how git repository work so initially we have this echo command what echo does is like uh, initially we would be having an echo echo and in this we have this inverted comma in which hash scalar web dev so this is the name of the repository and this arrow arrow means we are adding this particular text within this readme file so as soon as i hit enter so our readme file is being created and in this so hash scalar web dev is being written so what we does is we have provided this readme.md file with this hash scalar web dev text and again we have a different uh, template string in order to represent and also format the readme file so hash represent our h1 element so we can definitely share our documentation in order to have some formatting code how you can format your readme files and this readme is the main file in through which you uh, any repository can be explained so i have run this command so the next command is git init git init basically does is just by hitting enter so it create a new empty repository so if you can see over here no git folder or uh, you can see nothing but and again by clicking on like in windows it's dir for getting all the directory and in max or linux system so it is ls so over there you can see uh, let me increase the size of this window again okay, showing this so i have just typed the ls command over here so i got readme.md as well as index.html so basically those files that are public are visible over through the ls command but there is there is a provision in order to get all the hidden files or all the command that i can run while changing my directory or running any uh, code so that's ls space hyphen a so that list all the folder as well as uh, file that is hidden as well as available within that particular folder so you can see over this dot git folder this is folder not file so this is a folder that consists a bunch of uh, uh folders as well as file in which our code base is being stored so again heading toward this dot get folder so again ls so we have the fetch head config hooks and other object and so this uh, basically consists of all the data and for for the code base in which i am making the repository at which point of time i have made the changes i have added the changes i have committed and all the data would be handled over this particular dot uh, git folder so moving back to what this so again we have the readme.md file so in till now we have just written git init command so i would be adding all the files uh what that so initially in this it's written git add readme file either you can just directly enter the name of the file Uh, that you want to add within the git staging environment staging me i have i am just creating a checkpoint over here like this is my initial code base or just enter git 
add dot dot represent every file that is uh, contained within the particular folder would be added as a checkpoint like i have done this changes and add added a checkpoint so what it does is go toward this source control tab so again i would be again explaining this so initially i have done the changes so that is come toward come within the changes changes tab so as soon as i hit this command so you can see toward this like the changes have been stacked so it now come toward and comes within the stacked changes tab so stack changes nothing but uh, i have created a checkpoint if i uh, like make any other changes so like i have written hi so that comes under the changes tab not within the stacked changes in order to create a new checkpoint so if i want to add this particular changes within the again the previous checkpoint so again i would be entering git add dot or you can just type git add index.html in order to uh, like take only index.html changes and again put that within the previous checkpoint that we have created again by entering so all these changes would be stacked and we we have uh, again created a checkpoint again the next command is git commit so we the git commits basically creates a particular folder or a history along with the id if so these changes would be kept as a separate entity so if we want to get back toward this entity so we have a particular id so we would take that id and we can definitely go back to that commit or that changes intended changes that we have done so i would be writing git commit but git commit command is not enough to commit all the changes so in order to commit the changes so we have to add the extra tag that is hyphen m hyphen m represent a message as displayed earlier so that we can write first commit so again uh, as i have told you in earlier session that we when we are visualizing so there are some error coming up so basically add that a uh, web browser we cannot uh, uh, handle all the git commands so basically we have initially git in it then git add or adding a checkpoint and adding all the files within that checkpoint we would be creating a commit along with a message that message is uh, represent so what we have committed in that particular uh, what we what that commit shows so basically uh, instead of uh, writing first commit so i would be writing added index html file and added readme but if index.html file is already created so i would be uh, rather uh, writing it as i have updated index.html file or i have updated a particular instance or i have updated a footer in index.html file or an intended file that you have done the changes so by clicking enter so just now uh, make sure where the changes are uh, going like if i click on enter so now two files changed and 14 insertions are made now from this so a uh, two file a uh, new commit with a id of 14 d27d4 so this is publicly visible over the commit history tag so that has been created so as soon as when i click on publish changes so get push oh i have to give origin so getting back towards the git repository so i would be adding the initial branch so git branch re represent and the a branch in which i am working hyphen capital m means the main branch that i would be committing from so as i have told you they, this is a branched system in which i am working in a branch and another person is working in another branch so i would be creating that and again clicking enter and i would be adding a remote so basically you don't have to remember this just you have to copy paste from this tab and just by copying that and again what it represent is get remote remote means where the origin is present so where we have to push all our data so add is the command of adding 
the origin origin is the main instance that we would be representing like the next text that you would be seeing will, will be the origin then this is the main uh, link or the address of the code repository where the online storage is available so by clicking on this command get add get remote add origin uh, again followed by this particular url hitting enter so uh, URL is being saved within dot git folder. So when I click on git push, so again neg neglecting this, so I just have to uh, when I just initial commit, so I have to type set upstream or hyphen u. So instead of like uh, entering hyphen hyphen set upstream, I can also type hyphen u for first commit. Else I can just type get push get origin push. main again when i click enter so you can see like every file it has every file that is being created that has been sent to our server so this is the main repository and when i click on refresh so you can see these two files are created so the instance that i was mentioning was readme.md so this is the readme.md that I was listening to. So hash mean h1 tag. So basically h1 tag is created and within the h1 tag. So other selling to have been taken into consideration by .md extension and readme.md file. All the content within the readme.md file is being visible below the code base that represent how and what this repository contains. So basically a small bunch of information about the repository and we have the index.html. So for anyone can copy the code base by clicking on this code button, either they can download the zip or open with GitHub desktop. So GitHub desktop is a tool. So this is the GitHub desktop. So you can download it by this or you have a bunch of option by HTTP SSH or GitHub CLI. Neglecting all this, click on HTTPS, copy this and just heads over to the explorer file explorer so check it out what happened when i uh, click uh, like type git clone clone mean i am downloading or uh, creating a copy of this online repository to the local storage git clone and i am pasting the url that i have copied this is the same url that i have added within the remote uh, like beforehand I get remote edit the same URL that I am writing it here okay by clicking on enter so it is uh, representing cloning this scalar web dev so you can see this scalar web dev folder is being created and again we have two files over here index.html containing uh, this whole bunch of document that I've created and Again, readme.md, the same, but like making changes to this will not affect the online server as I'm doing the changes locally, but this will not affect the online server if I hit refresh. So nothing is changed. So again, if I want to uh, like push these changes to the online repository, so what I go is go back to terminal and again change my directory to the scalar web dev now i am within this directory so neglecting these two i am within this directory that consists of two files in folder and again when i click on this so again it if you uh, like hit the command git clone and again followed by the remote origin url so dot git folder is already present within that particular folder so you don't have to do anything so again recalling those three commands that i've uh, told you earlier like git add again dot representing all those files that i've done the changes Git add dot git commit like updated index html okay So I would be opening this 
in a new VS code and we'll be deleting that. Okay. So okay. so we have the dot git folder over here. We did dot it. So we already have all the commands. Again, getting back towards the index.html file, I would be typing hi there. So again, going back towards this, so we you can see like a change have been committed. Like where the change have been committed, like I have changed hi to hi there along with the exclamation mark. So getting back towards the terminal. So I would be typing get add dot that represent the all the files that are being changed enter again that is being our checkpoint is created again I would be committing that hit commit along with updated index HTML file hitting enter that represent one insertion one deletion matlab one line change and one line is being deleted so get push. So now every time I don't have to enter hyphen u along with it, I have already defined the origin as well as the remote. So I just have to enter get push and hit enter all the files that are being changed. So that being transferred to the main document. So if I click on this index.html, so you can see high there. Initially it was high. And again, you can click on this commit you can see over here so that represent all the history till now at which point i have changed the code so initially added index html and added readme and the next one is updated index.html file committed 42 seconds ago initially i would be opening this file so that represent in in which file i have done the changes and in the next file at what instance i have done the changes like I have removed this file, this line and added this line. Yeah. yeah so this was the base, basic scenario of how it works while committing yeah. our changes. All right. Awesome. And uh, if anyone else has any questions, we'll be taking up some of the questions now live uh, in case you, if you're watching, uh, you want to take up some questions. Otherwise, um, of course, you can keep us uh, you can just tag me or Raghav in the uh, Discord server on Learn Together and we'll be answering those questions. But essentially, this was what we had to cover for the first session. Today's session was mainly just giving a very quick introduction to what exactly is web development and what you can expect uh, from the rest of the sessions. And uh, the next session that is going to be tomorrow, we're going to be starting off with the most basic essentials of front-end development with HTML and CSS, how you can build web pages um, and the individual building blocks of a web application uh, using HTML, CSS. That's what we're going to be covering.